for my market stall. It is currently 10.30 p.m. and I am still working on, well, I've just finished doing some final finishing touches. So I am heading off to bed now and I've got my alarm set for 4.30 a.m. The market starts at 6.30 so it's going to be a long day and I'm probably going to be really tired but I'm hoping it will be worth it. I hope I at least sell something but yeah either way it's going to be super fun and I'm going to hang out with my friends because I've got a few friends coming with me and I've got my mum coming, my stepdad's coming, my partner's coming, my partner's mum's coming. There's a big crowd so it will be fun either way and yeah I'll see you guys in the morning. So it is currently 4.35 a.m. and I've just woken up, I've just gotten out of bed and it's market day so let's get to it. It's going to be a long day, it's going to be a good day, let's hope the weather holds up. Great, so pray. <laughs> so far, I've made one sale, five dollars, and I need to make thirty-three dollars to pay, to pay for the stall. So you know, we're getting there <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Update. <laughs> made a few sales. Mustard definitely seems to be oh, yeah. the colour of the day. And I now yeah, sold out of mustard for DWBs. So, there we go. How much chicken? guys that's a wrap um, we packed up a little bit early because it was raining and everything was getting absolutely saturated so we had a good day overall I think next time I will go to an actual craft market I think the market that we were at was more of like a trash and treasure kind of market so I feel like it wasn't really the clientele that we needed but we still made a few sales which was good and for my first market stall I guess it wasn't too bad so now I'm on my way home. Okay, so I just got home and I thought I would sit down with you guys and just go through the day and tell you what I maybe regretted, what I learnt and what my best sellers were. So, okay, so first of all, I wanna start off by saying, I don't know if this is common to every outdoor market, but it was kind of a bit of, sh bit of a shock to me. So, Today when we got there, we had to unload our car and then take our car and move it to the car park. So my friend Sam, who is from Dilly Dolly, who was doing the market with me, she got there first and she unloaded all her stuff and then she waited for us to get there. She took her car and we brought our car in, unloaded all our stuff and then we took our car. While we were unpacking, so we were literally 
taking stuff out of our car and people were coming up to us trying to go through all our stuff, like all our bags, everything, trying to see what we had. Mind you, it is pitch black. It was six o'clock in the morning and it's winter, so it was pitch black. There was no sun. So all these people are coming around, all of our stuff, before we'd even started setting up with torches and headlamps and asking if we had mobile phones for sale or jewellery for sale or all this stuff. And I was just like, what is going on? These people are like scavengers. Like, I honestly, I honestly don't know what was going on. Obviously, people who know the market and know the flow and know when people get there to sell stuff, they go early because they want to get the bargains or, you know, the good stuff first before the general public start getting there. But I was kind of just a little bit taken aback because I was like, all these people are coming up to me. I haven't even started unloading. None of my stuff is second hand. Can you just go away? Like, I'm trying to set up my stall and you're in my way with your headlamps and your torches shining in my face. So, yeah, we were both, my, like, myself and my friend Sam, we're kind of a bit like, whoa, you guys need to calm down. So, I don't know if this is just what happens at the Camberwell market, but, or if it's, you know, if it happens at every outdoor market, but that to me was a little bit of a turn off. I was kind of like, eh. I don't know. And I didn't want to leave my stuff because I felt like people were going to come and steal my stuff. So I had to stand with it all the time, even throughout the day. It kind of just put a bad taste in my mouth, I guess. And it kind of just, I was just like, oh, like people, like, are you trying to steal my stuff? Like, why are you going through all my bags? Anyway, that was my first impression. So you can imagine for the rest of the day, like what I thought the rest of the day was going to go like. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be great, isn't it? I just wanted to share that with you guys if you were thinking of doing Camberwell Market specifically because that to me was, yeah, a bit of a shock and I didn't expect it and it kind of, yeah, turned me off a bit. We actually ended up seeing a sign a little bit later in the day. There was a sign saying, storeholders beware of thieves while setting up or something like that. It said, and I yeah, I don't know. It kind of was just a bit ugh to me. And I know, like, it's nothing to do with the market itself. It's just people. But, yeah, it just didn't feel extremely safe. I would have hated to be there by myself at that time in the morning when it was dark because, yeah, I just felt like people were just coming to steal all my stuff. Thankfully, they didn't. Well, not that I've noticed so far. So if they did, they didn't take anything of value. But to me, that was just a little bit like, ugh. Mm. that's just me <laughs> now by far my best sellers were my hand towels so the hand towels that I crocheted along the top of they were my best sellers by far I pretty much sold out of them I've only got two left so yep hands down they were my best sellers which I thought they might be um, as I mentioned in my stock video I think they are a little bit nostalgic for people so when people see them they're like oh my god I used to have those when I was a kid or my grandma used to have those. I'm going to buy one. So I did think that they probably would do really well. I didn't know if they would be my best seller, but they definitely hands down were my best seller today. Coming second was my Dear Debbie Beanies. I sold half of what I had. So I had a total of 10 and I sold five of them today, which was great. I didn't know if I would sell anything to be honest. So anything that I sold, I am grateful for. So I sold five of those. So they were actually my second best sellers. And coming in third was my twist headbands, which I discussed in my stock video as well. I will link that and you can go and check that out. And that pattern is by Taylor Lynn Crochet. So they were my three top sellers. I would definitely stock them again. I think they all did really well and I think they would do even better at a craft market, which brings me to probably my biggest regret about today and about my market stalls. So basically, I didn't really do a whole lot of research around this market. This market that I went to today, I actually had never been to before. I had heard really good things about it and everyone raved about how good it was. So I thought, you know, why not? It's a great market. Everyone raves about it, so it must be good. Yes, it was a great market and I wouldn't say it was not good, 
but it was just a different clientele to what my business would usually attract. So basically this market, so the Camberwell Sunday market, which is the market that I attended today, was probably more of a trash and treasure market, which I did mention before. Um, probably I want to say 95% of the stalls there, and I'm talking out of hundreds of stalls, 95% of them would have been secondhand vintage goods. So secondhand clothing, which was a lot, a lot of them were secondhand clothing. And there was probably a total of, I'm going to say less than five stalls out of probably 200 stalls, if not more, that were handmade products. So it wasn't really the kind of market that was attracting the clientele that I would be wanting to sell my items to or what would what the clientele that would be interested in buying my items so having said that I still believe I did it pretty well like I made about $300 just today so I'm not saying that's bad at all I am incredibly proud of myself for even earning that much because I honestly didn't think I would sell anything so yeah, to make $300 in a day for me is amazing, but I just think that I probably would have done even better um, if I had have done a little bit more research and actually attended a craft market where there would be the right clientele that would be more likely to buy my product and more likely to spend the money. Today, there was a lot of people. It was really, really busy, even though the weather was crap. Um, I was a little bit worried that nobody would come because the weather was a bit crappy, but it was really, really busy. There was hundreds and hundreds of people, but they just weren't looking for my product. Um, I believe a lot of them would have been there to get cheap secondhand clothing or secondhand items, which is fine. I'm all for that. But when I had a lot of people looking through my store and when they saw my prices, they were kind of like, oh, because uh, I think they were expecting to go there and get a bargain, which all my stuff is brand new, all of it's handmade, I'm going to price it accordingly and I'm not going to lower my prices. I'd rather sell it at the original price that I've priced it at rather than discounting because, I don't know, that just, I don't know, I think it just lessens the value of handmade items and I feel like these days people are really starting to appreciate handmade products. So I'm not going to go lowering my prices because that's just lowering the standard for everyone in the maker community. And I'm not going to do that because we deserve to be paid for what we make and the time we spend and the effort that we put into it and the materials that we buy, we deserve to be paid for it. So I'm not going to lower my prices, but what I am going to do next time is research the market and make sure that it is a craft specific market because I believe that is where the right people are going to go and I'm going to attract the right, pe the right people and the right customers for my product. What I learned. Okay, so what did I learn today? I think the biggest thing was what I was just talking about, um, researching the market before you sign up for it or commit to it. But what else did I learn? I'm still on the fence in regards to making conversation with people. I found it a little bit 50-50, so whenever someone would walk into my stall or come up to my table, I would say, hi, how are you going? And 50% would talk back and make conversation and be like, yeah, really good, thanks, how are you? And 50% would kind of be like, yeah, good, thanks, and then walk away. So I don't know if it just depends on the person, obviously, um, whether you want to be greeted or not walking into a stall. I know for me, sometimes when people are really forthcoming and really like, hi, how are you going? It kind of feels like you're like pressuring me to buy something, even though you're not saying you must buy something, but you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like a bit of added pressure on you, like they're watching you or they're expecting you to buy something or something. So I don't know. I think it just depends on the person, whether or not they want to be welcomed. But I'm always going to try and be friendly. So that's all I can do, right? Secondly, I think I learned that, well, number one, I was very glad that I decided to put a mirror on my table. I think it really, really paid off and it probably did promote sales because people could actually see what the beanies and headbands looked like on 
which yeah, I was 100% glad that I took the mirror. And secondly, I learned that if someone is looking at a beanie or a headband or something that they can wear, let them know that there's a mirror there because they may not have realized. And once you say, oh, there's a mirror there if you want to try it on, they'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Because some people I think don't realize that they actually are allowed to try things on. So they might think, oh, you know, I don't want to put it on my head or, you know, I'm probably not allowed to try it on. But once you let them know, yes, you can try it on, I found probably 90% of people were like, okay, cool. Yeah, I want to try it on. And most of them actually bought something. So I think that is a good tip. I am really glad that I had my square reader, so my little card reader that plugs into my phone so I could take card payments. I'm really glad um, I had that because I did make, I feel, a couple more sales from people that didn't have any cash on them. They only had cards, so that was really handy and I'm glad that I did get one of those. I will leave a link down below if you want to go get one or if you want to sign up for a square account. It's really, really easy. I also discussed my square reader in my market store props video which I will link up here as well so if you want to go check that out please feel free um, but yeah I was really glad that I had my square reader because a lot of people don't carry cash these days so to have my square reader and to be able to say oh it's okay I take card people were like oh wow cool that's awesome because not many I feel not many store holders at this particular market would have taken card so I think that gave me a little bit of an advantage so overall, they're probably the main things that I would say I learned from today. I will definitely be taking everything on board and considering it for my next market. I have already started to think about doing another one because today was actually really, really fun. And I would love your suggestions. So if you guys know of any craft markets in the Melbourne area, please comment them down below because I love getting suggestions on craft markets. I have been to a few myself and I do have a few in mind that I think could be good, but I'm always open to suggestions. So if you do know of any great craft markets around the Melbourne, Australia area, please comment them down below. I would love to hear them. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. It is completely different to anything I've ever done before. This is my very first vlog. So I know it's probably not perfect, but I tried my best and that's all you can do. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you took something away from this. And I hope that if you were thinking of doing a market stall in future, you maybe got some ideas or some tips or learned something from this video. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.